we saw in our example here of the free reduced lunch and the exam scores that we couldn't say, even though there was a strong negative, I believe, yeah, and, uh, well, a moderate negative, moderate negative relationship. Even though they had a moderate negative relationship, we cannot say that the free reduced lunch causes the low exam scores. And that's primarily due to these lovely words right here, lurking variables. Those lurking variables and also how the data is collected, which they kind of go hand in hand, prevent us from being able to say that one thing causes the other. Now you've heard this before in science class, correlation is not causation. And so we want to spend just another page kind of flushing this idea out a little bit. So correlation is not causation. In our class, we're going to say due to lurking variables such as dot dot dot, and you're going to fill in the such that values. So fill in, well, I got to underline, fill in, um, plausible uh, lurking variables for the, each situation. I put that in brackets because, you know, that's those are my instructions to you. So that's what you'll be doing. So you're going to have a question like this, I, I guarantee you on the final. Um, you will also have one on the midterm or on exam one, you're going to have it because it's a really important concept. Correlation is a very powerful tool, but it's it's not indicative of causation. It doesn't tell us what causes things. So, for example, I have over here um, a comic from Mr. Jason Love, who I, yes, indeed, have paid the copyright for. Um, great artist um, with a lot of great statistics cartoons. And he is showing an absolutely true um, positive correlation. There's a strong positive correlation between ice cream sales and crime rates. So ice cream sales, oops, sorry, that wasn't my fault. Ice cream sales and crime rates. And this is in the U.S. in particular is where we've shown this with data. In Europe we've shown this, but actually it's pretty much true anywhere um, as long as it's a place that has ice cream. Have a strong positive correlation. So when one goes up, the other goes up. But that doesn't mean that the ice cream sales cause the crime. That's because there's something else going on here. And this is absolutely true, by the way. Um, for example, in Chicago in the last few summers. So if you go look up the crime rate data for July 4th weekend in Chicago for 2015, 2014, 2013, every year there's been a mass amount of shootings in Chicago. Um, Chicago's not alone, but it's been particularly bad in Chicago during July 4th, one of the hottest um, holidays of the year because people have time on their hand and people have hot weather so they're out roaming around and they tend to interact with each other and they tend to fight and that's one of the reasons that crime rates go up in this it's because it's summertime it's because it's um the temperature is high people are out and about they're out on their porches they're conversing and they find hey i don't really like this neighbor or we're fighting over this you know tree on our property line etc and it tends to go a little crazy every july 4th weekend in a lot of u.s major cities all right, so that's because there is a lurking variable right there, um, season, temperature, etc. Those are the lurking variables in this situation, right? Statistics do indeed show that crime rates sit, rise with the sale of ice cream, but it's not because one causes the other. It's because they're both correlated to temperature and season and holidays, actually. So that would be another one, right? All right, so now let's do this with a more serious example, although that is serious if you're involved in an area that has a high crime rate. But let's look at the SATs and ACT scores. So well, actually SATs in particular. So for US colleges and universities, students take a standard entrance exam. They're SATs or ACTs. The following computer output considers the relationship between the percentage participating in the SATs for each state and the median math SAT scores for those states. So let's just take a look at what's happening here. So over here on the left of this graph, you have a whole bunch of states that only, you know, 5% of the students take the SAT, 10% of the students take the SAT, and so on. Whereas over here, you've got a few states that are, have 100% of the students taking the SAT, or very, very close to it, 80% taking the SAT, 70% taking the SATs, and so on. So what's happening, interestingly enough, is that when a 
state has more students taking the SATs, they have a lower math SAT score. Hmm. Interesting. So let's start off with what the correlation coefficient is. The correlation coefficient is R, which is this value right here. Hold on. I'll make it green. There we go. So there's R. That is our correlation coefficient. Oops, there it is, and I typed it up. So R is negative 0.891. Now, given this scatter diagram, hello, and that correlation coefficient, mm -hmm, what kind of relationship is that? Well, that is a strong negative relationship. Let me go back and find that table real quick. Here it is right here, the rule of thumb for gauging strength and direction. So since you're at negative 0.891, you are very much on the strong negative side, this red zone over here. So we see that our relationship here is a strong negative relationship. So now we need to ask ourselves, why is that happening? Right? What's causing this? And the answer is, well, we don't know what's causing it. <laughs> That's kind of the problem. So does the fact that these states over here, they have a high participation rate and they have lower math scores, median math scores. Whereas these states over here on the left, they've got low participation rate, but they have very high math scores. So is it making people take the SATs, making them worse at math? Right? That's what they're asking. Right? So does participation in the SATs cause lower math scores? Right. Does making a state or does a state making students take the SATs mean they're worse at math? And the answer to that is no, not at all. <laughs> right. There is a there's a correlation here for sure. And it's a strong one. Right. There is a relationship going on, but it's not because the SATs are causing lower math scores. So I typed it up right here. What's happening is there's a correlation between high SAT participation and low math scores, but it is not causation, and it's because of lurking variables, or I should say, because of lurking variables, such as the participation of the entire state's universities and colleges in either the SAT or ACT. In other words, what's happening is there are states in, in America where almost every student takes the SATs. And there are other states where almost every student takes the ACTs. And they tend to go by state. Not for all states, but for a lot of them. So you have some states that 100% of the students take the SATs. And you have some states where 100% of the student takes the ACTs. Right? So in other words, states where no students would normally take the SATs, only the very best students, and quite frankly, usually the wealthiest, are taking the SATs because they want to be able to go to an out-of-state college. Now, why do I say wealthiest? Well, out-of-state tuition is higher. So if you're going to have a student over here, one of these people right here, these dots, these are states. So if you're a student living in those states, almost nobody takes the SAT in that state. So only the students that want to go out of state, that want to transfer to a different school. So for example, I live in Michigan. So if you want to go to Penn State, for example, you have to take the SATs instead of the ACTs, possibly. I don't know if Penn State takes SATs or ACTs, but you get my, my drift. So if you want to transfer out of state, that's what you need, but then you'll be paying out of state tuition. And if you can afford out of state tuition, you tend to be wealthier, which also in America, unfortunately, tends to be better students. So the, the better students, the wealthier students would take the SATs because they can afford to take an expensive test like that when they're transferring out of state. So in other words, correlation is not causation here because what's happening is these this clump over here on the left, what you're capturing is those are states where only the very best and brightest would t bother taking the SATs because those are ACT states. So people aren't going to bother taking the SAT unless they're, they know they've got a good shot of getting into a school out of state and they can afford it. All right, we're all done with this section. I'll see you back here for section 4.2.